Thank you for listening to the BJJ Brick Podcast. We'll be bringing you Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and good times. We hope to help you get the most out of your grappling ability and meet your goals both on and off the mat. Welcome back to the BJJ Brick Podcast. Uh, this week, episode 365. And that's actually kind of a crazy number. So uh, you could actually listen to one episode every day and take up a whole year. So uh, I know the new year's coming up. So I think that's pretty good uh, um, new year's resolution uh, for somebody to do. So listen to an episode every day. But uh, this week... Uh, we're going to talk about coming back from an injury uh, to the mass, and uh, it's actually perfect timing because uh, one of our co-hosts, the uh, infamous, the one, the only, Joe Thomas, actually has a uh, hurt knee right now. So how you doing, Joe? You know, uh, it, it feels like it's probably safe enough to maybe just do some positional sparring. I'm at work right now, but when I get home in uh, about 10 days, I'll probably test it out. But it's been like uh, it's been six weeks or so since I hurt my knee, and I haven't rolled once since. So, um, Joe, is it your left or your right knee? It is my left knee. Sweet. Is that so the one? Go, is that the one you're go, gonna try? Knee bar? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go full blast on that when we start rolling. <laughs> rolling light. Yeah. Well, it's not just coming back from an injury; it's just coming back from some time off. The mats is kind of what I was thinking about that because a lot of people. Oh, sorry. No, that's the most common one. But for myself, I really haven't been grappling much during this whole COVID thing. And I'm looking forward oh, yeah, to getting point. back on the mats in a capacity that is uh, normal. <laughs> I grapple with my wife a couple times a week. Um, I've helped a couple of police recruit classes. I, I, did, I thought that was like uh, pretty essential. Um, they had they, they had to downsize their teaching um the number of instructors and since they, they were happy to have me there. So I was, I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I could try to take the place of a couple of the ones that were missing a couple of times. So that's about my grappling. I've been to a couple of, uh, belt promotion events and that sort of thing, but really it's been a shell of what it once was. And now I feel like I'm a shell of what I once was as well. Yeah. I, pro I probably haven't grappled as much this year as I would in a quarter of a year in any of the other years I've done jujitsu. Yeah. How about the same? Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I've yeah. had actually two breaks this year. And even when I'm not on break, I have not been rolling very much, but you know, my wife had a hysterectomy earlier in the year and it was right after the first lockdown and COVID was pretty scary and there was no way I was going to risk bringing that home when she was recovering. So I had, I don't know, five or six weeks then off as well. So this is my second extended break in one year yeah and when you say break uh no pun intended <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah nothing's broke it's just all tweaked and compressed and pulled and yeah but yeah i i guess i wasn't thinking about that way byron um but i think it'll be a great episode then just because how many people haven't been able to train and and will come back from a uh, uh you know a long break yeah, um, and no hopefully, pun, no pun intended. If, if it, like I know a lot of people who are just just training. That's that's what they they're doing, and um, I just haven't. I felt like I'm exposed to it almost every time I go to work. <laughs> I will see somebody who has COVID or who uh, who has all the signs of it or a actual confirmed case, and we'll have them as a patient. And it's like I can't bring that into the gym, so. I've just been on hold. I think I'll probably get the vaccine here within a couple of weeks. We're recording this on December 19th. Christmas time. Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's right around the corner. Yeah, and a Happy New Year. Well, thank you. Feliz Navidad. My wife told me we were going to have a rap party uh, after we get done recording this, and I started throwing down some You're beats. You're not a rapper. I started throwing down some beats, yeah. and she was like, not going to work. <laughs> so she's bringing up wrapping paper and gifts to, to rap, and I'm... I'm trying to make some rhymes, but I don't have Gary's skill. <laughs> you don't have my skills, no. Gary, but, uh, I, let's start on the something. challenge. I want to hear a couple of rhymes off of one of us uh, this episode. My name is G, and I like to rap. I got a microphone. Don't give me no crap. I'll take you down and pass your guard. 
I don't know what comes next because I don't know what rhymes with guard. Waka waka waka. <laughs> 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 oh, that's oh, not really Gary. Gary, just off of off of one of our sentences throw in a throw in a rhyme or two as we go no hurry no no rush it you got to be smooth with these things gary yep you definitely got to be smooth um speaking of smooth uh life lesson um this is a time of the show where we uh talk about something that happened either on the mat and drag it off the mat or it happened off the mat and drag it back on the mat and The other day I was thinking about uh, my dog. Uh, My dog's getting a little bit older. And uh, so when we go on walks now, uh, my dog's got pretty bad arthritis. And uh, my dog walks very, very slow. Um, So, I mean, we may do a quarter mile to a half a mile. And by the time my dog smells everything, it may take us, uh, you know, an hour to do. And, you know, before, you know, my dog was lively and would go crazy and drag me everywhere and, And, you know, I'd go to the woods with her through these paths in the woods and uh, uh, we would just fly through it. Um, And, you know, so I'm sitting there walking with my dog and we're walking through a a park here. It's called Pawnee Prairie Park. It's got probably five miles of wooded trails. And, uh, you know, I've been through there probably a couple thousand times. Um, But normally you know, going through it pretty fast or running, um, by myself or even riding my mountain bike through it. But, uh, so this time I, I took my dog there and, uh, I'm telling you just from walking slow and just, you know, enjoying my time, I saw so many things I had never seen. Sorry. I hope you you see Billy Jean. (laughs) No, I didn't see Billy Jean. Sorry, I just got distracted with my phone going off. But I saw so many uh, things I'd never seen before. Um, and I'd walked through these places so many different times. And it started making me think about back when I was in college. I had an soci- intro to sociology class. And I remember I thought it was really strange. Our sociology instructor told us all to go outside one day during class. And we got in the middle of the quad right there in, in campus. And uh, he said, walk as slow as possible from one end of campus to the other. And, you know, we all kind of thought it was a big joke, uh, you know, just really walking slow, trying to take up the whole class period. But that's what he was trying to tell us to do. Sometimes we just get going too fast. We miss all the stuff around us. And it made me think about jujitsu. Uh, you know, when you get on the mat, I see a bunch of new people you know, just wanting to go zero to a hundred right off the bat. They want to learn barambolas. They want to do, you know, all this crazy stuff or, or they're just rolling too fast and, uh, you know, making a ton of mistakes. And, you know, I think a a good lesson is when we're on the mat, there's no need to go too fast. Uh, Let's take our time. I know I've heard this quote so many times, but jujitsu is, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And, you know, I can tell you, you know, Joe, you're a brown belt. Byron, you're a black belt. You guys have never stopped learning. You will never stop learning. Um, you know, I, I can tell you in 10 years we'll be having this same conversation when we're all black belts and we'll be saying, you know, we've never stopped learning. It, it's, a, it's a slow process. If, if we try to speed everything up, speed up the learning curve. I mean, we're trying to learn quicker, but it can be counterproductive if we don't slow down, take a look and smell the roses, see what we're doing. Um, so, you know, I thought my dog taught me a pretty good lesson this week. Yeah. Gary, I feel like uh, you're hitting a peak. You uh, bring the off-the-mat lesson, said. and uh, I was trying to run with week. <laughs> uh, no, and, and you also have a quote for us. But, yeah, that's that's. I remember old Johnny Jiu-Jitsu would tell us, if you're, if you're traveling in a car and you're going 100 miles an hour, you don't see any of the scenery. It's just too fast. And if you slow down and – and go at a at a much slower speed. You get to see lots of things that you wouldn't see, and that, that's a great example with your dog. And I like how you didn't expect it. You're like I'm just walking my dog. Okay, we're going really slow, and then you see things you didn't expect because you're normally running through or on your bike going eight miles an hour like a maniac that you are. Um, it's just that, that's a, that's a cool uh, way to reflect on. Jiu Jitsu, and there, there's definitely it is fun to train Jiu Jitsu and to go fast and to and to you know get get a rhythm and to hit your move with like good timing. That's a lot of fun, 
But if you always go fast, you miss a lot. And and maybe you, by pausing. And the other thing about going slower is you get to add more pressure sometimes. You get to let them sit with that pressure and let them feel it. And kind of maybe a little bit of panic sets in sometimes. You know, Gary, um, I think a, a, a real uh, – an application to this, something you and Byron have both talked about, is during your time on the match, you guys have both taken long periods of time to just focus on one technique or one type of te- technique, and it's kind of like that walk as slow as you can from one end of the campus to the other. If you work on your um, you know, arm bars for a month, you can learn – I, I guess most of the obvious nuts and bolts that there are to, to do in an arm bar. But if you keep working on it, keep working on it, you're still learning stuff in the third month and the fourth month and the fifth month that you, you probably wouldn't learn if you just did your arm bar for six weeks that I got it pretty good. Now I'm going to move on to the next technique. So I think for anybody list, listening, that's a good way to apply this, pick a technique, set a length of time, three months, six months, and concentrate on something for that length of time. And you'll be surprised at what how much you continue to learn month after month. Yeah, that's definitely a good point right there, Joe. Joe, you get no credit points for running month after month. <laughs> you- <laughs> <laughs> that was the best I got. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, speaking of credit points, uh, <laughs> we got a quote this, this uh, month. And usually we do the quote first and then BS for a little bit and then do the life lesson. But we have a life lesson from Gary Hall and a quote from John Danaher. And obviously, you know, who's going to get top billing there. So we went with the life lesson first this time, (laughs) (laughs) but the quote is there's a difference between something catastrophic and something that is uncomfortable. If something's catastrophic, like getting a limb broken or a choked on too tight, you tap. If something is uncomfortable, you have to find a way out. So, Gary, you're the one that discovered this quote and brought it to us. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I personally thought it was a good quote. Uh, that's why I brought it to you, Joe. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a, it's a great quote. Um, it's uh, It teaches you perseverance. Um, you know, just because you're in a crappy position doesn't mean – we can, you know, a position that hurts a little bit, you know, is uncomfortable. We can't just quit. We got to find a way out. We got to have heart. We got to use our brain and, and figure a way out of this, you know, or maybe even reverse engineer it. Do we need to move our hips? Do we need to shrimp a little bit? Do I need to get a hook in, you know, something to take that pressure off? Um, you know, it's a big game of chess. Joe's trying to fold me up and do, uh, you know, involuntary fold me up and I'm trying to find a way to get out. Um, but I'm not going to learn as much if I just quit or tap, let's say tap, not quit, um, tap every time it's a little bit uncomfortable. And, you know, when you first start jujitsu or wrestling or whatever, it takes some time to get used to being uncomfortable. Um, but I have to work out of those positions. Um, but there are some positions, you know, uh, as John Danaher talked about, they're catastrophic. My arm is already straight. Uh, Byron's over my head. Byron's legs are over my head and chest, and he's got my thumb pointed up in the air. Um, At that point, I'm probably not going to get out. Um, And at that point, it's probably better just to uh, tap uh, because it's catastrophic, and that way I can train again, and I won't have to take some time off and then listen to this this podcast episode to figure out how I can come back. And we could drag this right into the woods with Gary and his dog for off the mat lesson as well. I mean, sometimes life is like a little bit like, like maybe your job, it's a little uncomfortable. It's a hard, it's this, you know, maybe this season, you know, holiday season is tough for your job or whatever, you know, you hang in there and you get through it. Maybe your job isn't for you. You know, maybe it's just the type of person you are, your personality, maybe your coworkers aren't the type of people you want to associate with, whatever. Is that catastrophic? Well, maybe, maybe it's time to to make an adjustment and, and to, and to, to pivot into something else. Uh, but, you know, there's always these options. And I, I, I give, when people are new at jiu-jitsu, I like to tell them, if you are, you know, too uncomfortable or, you know, you don't know what to do, you, you could tap. Like, I give them that easy out. And, and they usually will take it a time or two, and then they quit. They don't want to tap unless it's actually, you know, catastrophic is what they're saying here. 
but I think it lets them relax a little bit and and try to work a little bit more and understand that if they tap because they're scared or they're nervous or they're stuck, that's that's okay. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll figure out what happened and then maybe a different thing you could do. It's okay to, especially if you're brand new, like I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Can we restart? Well, sure. <laughs> Let me just show you how to get out of that or show you how to try to get out of that. But, um, yeah, when dealing with professional athletes or just athletes who want to be their best, yeah, you're going to have to just deal with being uncomfortable a lot. And that's fine. That's why, I mean, that's why pressure points don't work. You want me to move because because I'm uncomfortable? <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just. I like the quote. It's uh, you can take it off the off the mat or on the mat or, um, yeah. John Danaher is definitely a uh, a treasure to our sport. Yeah, pretty smart guy. <laughs> no, and, and, pretty good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and Byron, you were talking about we can take it on or off the mat, and you know, most people are thinking on the mat, but you know, off the mat, uh, I just think being uncomfortable, learning how to to be uncomfortable and perform. Uh, I, I think jujitsu really helps off the mat. I can think about, you know, just tough times at work. And, uh, I look around and I see half my department, you know, stressed to the hill, failing, you know, just falling apart. Trying to pick up and, Gary Slack. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> yeah. I really think, uh, jujitsu is one thing that has uh, helped me handle it. And, you know, I can think of here just not too long ago, you know, we were talking about COVID here a minute ago, I showed up for work one day and uh, out of my department of altogether 14 people, nine of them all did not come in on Monday due to all having COVID. And this isn't a really busy time of the year. And we're down almost 67 percent of our staff. And, uh, you know, you're not down for uh, a week or two days, you're down minimum of two weeks. And, yeah. you know, we had half of them back in two weeks and some of them were pretty bad and didn't come back till after a month. And, uh, I really think, you know, my jujitsu helped me in, in situations like that. So, uh, jujitsu, you know, being uncomfortable, you know, being uncomfortable in jujitsu has helped me not only on the mats, but it's helped me in real life. And, uh, you know, that's uh invaluable uh lesson to learn i say also in learning you know when the tap when to say i need some help i need to uh, you know th this uh, point. isn't a good spot for me point. i need to make a change it could be with a relationship or at yeah. work or wh whatever like it's you can't always just try to squirm out of things <laughs> like in jujitsu there's time to tap there's time to get help it's a time to um you know make a change make a career change or whatever it is, maybe, you know, go see a marriage counselor or I don't know. Everybody's got different lives and everything's, but, um, yeah, that's, I think it, it does play well on and off the mat. You know, that made me start thinking about something, um, you know, how much we can learn from jujitsu and jujitsu athletes. And, you know, I think about, you know, my business career, of how many people have come in and, and talked to our company and training days from different, uh, different professions, sports professions. Like last time we had a guy who was a uh, punter for the Kansas city chiefs come in and talk to us. But, you know, I think that could be a good job for some of these jujitsu people, you know, to go in and, uh, speak to companies about how jujitsu can help you, um, uh, you know, come through crisis, you know, and, and, uh, you know, not get as stressed. And, you know, the first person mind that I thought about that while you were talking, Byron, is, as I know, I've told you this before, but Justin Rader, you know, just his passion um, and the way he speaks. I've always said he'd be an incredible uh, public speaker, a motivator. Um, but I could see him coming into a to a business or a school and sitting around and, you know, motivating 100 students or, or workers to, uh, you know, perform better at their job or just life in general. Um, but I, I really do think jujitsu it will teach us a lot of lessons. Yes, it will. But you got to drive slow enough or walk slow enough in order to pick them up. You know what I'm saying? Stop and smell the roses. Not not in jujitsu so much. <laughs> 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 not literally, as Gary would say. Uh, I want to give a quick mention of 
our audiobooks. We have uh, two audiobooks that are for sale in the BJJ Brick shop on our website. One of them is Six Games for BJJ, and that's more towards the intermediate to advanced student who wants to just kind of alter the way they do, do jiu-jitsu to find more nuance to their game and, and maybe a few things that they could do differently. And then the other book is Your First Year of BJJ. Uh, and that there you go. It's for someone who's in who's got a year or less, including hasn't started yet. And they're both just if I could sit down and talk with you for for the time of the book, that's what they would be. Like I want to give you some advice. Here you go, my friend. Check them out. They're on. They're uh, in the BJJ on BJJBrick dot com. Click the shop, and they're both in there. And the support goes and helps to support the podcast. So we've. I'm experiencing my longest break of um, hard training, I would say. I don't do – I haven't done – I mean, I don't do hard training with my wife. And the the bit I've done with the police recruits, they – some of them are physically large people. <laughs> but it's not not quality hard training that that you would get from a, a competitive role. So this is my biggest break of, of hard jiu-jitsu training. And uh, that I've ever had, you know, I've never really been injured doing this for since 2002. Uh, Gary, do you have a, a substantial break under your uh, time frame there? No, um, actually, uh, longest I ever took off, I think, was uh, a month, uh, you know, with rib injuries. But uh, otherwise, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm still training um, two days a week right now. And uh, have been training through COVID, so uh, I have been getting some. But uh, now I've uh, really, uh, besides that one month period, uh, I don't think I've ever been off more than a week. And if you guys don't know Gary, he is basically training with a person. <laughs> yeah. uh, very small setting. Um, hate to get hate to get you some hate mail, Gary, but he's training. Um, yeah, he's training as safe as you can, right? I mean, it's a small circle. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I. Since COVID, I've just been training with one person. We kind of got our own little bubble. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a great training partner and uh, pushes me. And uh, today he dropped me on my head. So <laughs> can't go wrong with that. We knew something was wrong with you today, Gary. <laughs> How about you, Joe? Yeah, for most of 2020, since about uh, March anyway, um, it's been five or six times a month on a good month. And then, like I said, between my wife's surgery and now my knee being a little messed up, I've also had two periods here where I haven't trained at all for like six weeks. So I guess I would kind of consider the last seven months or so, uh, mostly a break. And, and like you, that's by far the longest in the last 12, I guess I've been doing this 12 years, 13 years solid now. Uh, and that's by far the longest break. You know, quick question though, Byron, I bet you're probably feeling pretty good though. Like, uh, nagging injuries, uh, wrists, fingers, uh, knees, ankles. Um, yeah, I, I generally don't walk around hurting though. <laughs> okay. Like I, like Give you a couple th- years. it would be a thing you, you could get heal up. Yeah, it could be a thing where I, I would, yeah, I really heal up and feel great. But um, I'm trying to stay fit. You know, I'm trying to run several times a week and do some well. kettlebell stuff. I, yeah, it's going poorly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's just not as fun. I was telling somebody the other day you know, I work with, it's like, it is, I get to go work out and have fun uh, for jujitsu. Like, you go to a place where 20 or 40 of your friends are hanging out, go ha- laugh, have a great time. And oh yeah, you had a crazy good workout at the same time. Like that's what it is. That's what it is to me a lot of times. And so take out my best workout, my most intense, uh, mentally and physically stimulating workout and it's gone. And I've been, you know, put on some headphones and go run for three or four miles. That doesn't, I just don't push myself hard enough during that. You know, go do a little bit of what, some pull ups or some body weight exercises or some some Turkish get ups or something like that. Those, those are all good and they're helping. I think that's one thing is I'm trying to stay ready. <laughs> well, you know, Byron, that's uh, that's not a topic you had on the list you sent us, but I think it's a great one. Uh, maybe you should talk a little more, bit more about it. Is um, 
recognizing when you're on a break, most people like I knew I was going to be on a break the day after I messed my knee up. And uh, so what can you start doing at that point um, to be ready? Like my knees messed up, but that doesn't uh, mean I can't do sit ups. It doesn't mean I can't do some light upper body exercises, you know, so that that's probably a real key is when you recognize that you're starting that break period to be proactive. Yeah, and, you know, I, I do see Byron once a week. Uh, you know, he works with his wife on Saturdays. and and But the one thing that's impressed me, Byron, is you're still thin as you always are. Um, you know, I think of somebody like you who doesn't really like working out, um, and jiu-jitsu is your main thing, and you've always ran, but it doesn't look like you've put on any weight, uh, you know, which will really pay huge dividends uh, when you do come back. I, I, I kind of thought you were going to throw – it was going to be an insult worked in there, Gary. No, no. That, I, mean, <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm really getting ready to dodge it. You know, what's he going to throw the hook? Your arms, the hook? Are just, your, arm, Byron, your arms are just as small as they ever been. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm not, I'm not no, used to but, taking a genuine compliment from Gary. <laughs> yeah. No, I am uh, impressed. You know, I, I can tell you if I hadn't done any jiu-jitsu since March – I can tell you, I would have pushed some weight on. Yeah, um, just I mean, the, know, the the keys, you know, just a, a nut snack for breakfast, a reasonable. That's right. Because <laughs> you always like the the salty nuts. I remember first thing in the morning <laughs> and uh, afternoon. No, just night. at breakfast usually. Nuts have a lot of a lot of Snap. calories. In. I mean, it's like a like a packed food. But yeah, I do I do enjoy a good nut snack in the morning. Uh, I, I just put it on a tea for you guys. <laughs> make it too easy. So I think that l- l- Joe's right. Anticipating, like when when COVID first took away jujitsu for me, like I didn't know how long this would be. Like, but I could anticipate I'll be back in a month. Yeah, it's gonna be over in a month, sure. But if you do an actual injury or something, you get an idea of a time frame that you need to be uh, responsible and probably let it heal. And then work with that. You don't want you don't want to rewind anything of as far as fitness. I know I'm not as fit as I as my jiu-jitsu shape. Uh, and if I put on a few pounds, thank you, Gary, for not noticing. But I I want to stay in a reasonable shape. I don't want to to start from so far from behind where I could be. Uh, so just kind of keeping a program going, keeping the interest high. You know, I I don't know. Maybe we, we would be doing this podcast. You know, every week, like we used to, if if I was on the mat three or four times a week and 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 thinking about jujitsu all the time, you know, I don't know how much COVID took away some motivation for this. Sometimes, <laughs> like, it, I, I think about that because it's hard to tell w- why we do things sometimes or why things happen. Is is you, you could say, oh yeah, we just we'll take the show a different direction, but maybe part of that was. You know, I'm not on the mats enjoying this process, you know, for a little while. So I'll just ramp it down a little bit. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> like, I didn't feel that was the reason. But I also am not thinking about jujitsu. Like, each time I go to class, it's an it's a 30-minute drive to and from. That's an hour I sit in my vehicle and I'm either listening to a book or a podcast or thinking about jujitsu on the way. And, like, that's a lot of time to kind of just get excited about jujitsu that doesn't exist. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tangent that we didn't really need. <laughs> but uh, basically, prepare yourself, you know, for the the winter, you know, like for things not being plentiful, your jiu-jitsu being sparse, you know, like prepare. What, what does a bear do? They they eat a bunch of food so they can hibernate. What does a, a squirrel do? They hide their nuts. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I, somebody else take it. <laughs> <laughs> Byron, I do want to ask you a question. Yeah, I uh, nuts. Oh, yeah, I'm hiding my nuts. Hey, what's up? I'm doing the squirrel yeah. method. Now, uh, you were just talking about not training. You know, are you are you not thinking about jujitsu as much? I um, can't be. There's no way I am thinking about jujitsu as much because just going to class and coming home from class is kind of a, a guaranteed hour per you know, 30 minutes to and from an hour per day that I at least had a jujitsu on, on the back burner of my mind. Um, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I but just, I just, I, I don't I know just, that I am thinking about, it. maybe I crave it more now. And so, but yeah. 
I don't know. I don't. I didn't just have an experience where Gary camored me three times in a, in two minutes. That was, that's going to bug me for a month until I figure out what he did. Like that is that those aren't happening to me anymore. Not because I got out of the camor, because I'm not getting the quality time with Gary. <laughs> well, I was going to say I, I'm not training as much. Like I said, just two days a week now. But I almost find myself thinking more about jujitsu because I'm not training as much. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can think about just every night when I'm trying to sleep, it takes me a while to fall asleep because I'm always thinking about jujitsu. It's like, I'm just running scenarios, but I'm probably running the scenarios through my head at the, you know, twice, two times a week I trained, you know, like, Hey, you know, Mike dumped me on my head today. How do I prevent that next time? So yeah, I see where you're coming from. Joe, what about you? You know, you're. I know you haven't been training. Do you feel like you think more about jujitsu when you're not training, the same or less? Uh, definitely less. I'm having to work to stay engaged. I I notice uh, on my phone I got probably 16, 20 different podcasts that I listen to, and I notice I've been listening to home improvement podcasts. I've been listening to learn Spanish podcasts. I've been listening to gardening podcasts. And the jujitsu podcasts are somewhat getting ignored. I just, I I feel without having that physical engagement, it's, I I lose a little interest. So, uh, but, but I am working on it. I think that's one of the keys about, you know, being prepared to get back on the mats is to make sure you're somehow staying engaged, uh, trying to continue to, to learn and, you know, watch some instructionals or something. You got to do something. Yeah. Joe, uh, real quick, uh, you may have told me, and I just forgot, but how did you hurt your knee? I was skateboarding. Skateboarding, okay. Yeah, my son and I found this uh, giant drainage I've seen your ditch. videos yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, so I, I got too much speed and was approaching uh, an uphill portion of the ditch that was too steep for me to transition up, and I bailed and... I don't know. I compressed my knee, hyperextended my knee, twisted my ankle. A lot of things happened real quick. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, a double whammy for you, um, you know, because I know you not only do you love jujitsu, you love skateboarding. So you're shelved with both those sports. Yeah, my son came over a week or so ago when I was home. And I just real slowly kind of rolled around the driveway on my skateboard. That's the first time I've really done that since the incident so that that felt good good yeah it was kind of nice you had another physical hobby that you could do <laughs> with social distancing <laughs> um yeah, yeah. so the, yep. the old what we always say is if you're if you're injured still still make time to go in and swing by yeah. the, and, and enjoy the class See see the team, you know, enjoy the social aspect of jiu-jitsu and, and, and learn the techniques that is being taught and just, just kind of be on the sidelines. But I haven't done that. <laughs> like, that that's the reason I'm yeah, not there is because I, I, I don't want to risk anybody getting sick from, from what I'm bringing. Um, and I haven't got it yet. And, and I thought if I get it, man, I could, I could go train again for a few months at least. <laughs> but I, I've, I've had – I've taken multiple tests – like the uh, tickle your brain style, and and after exposures and stuff like that, and I've 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 even did an antibody test, and I didn't have any antibodies either. So, yeah, I've been been very fortunate to not catch it yet. But so, well, that Byron, to be honest, that's pretty ad- admirable that you would forego your training um, because you're around so many people who have COVID. You would forego your enjoyment to protect your team. And, uh, you know, that's one of the cool things about jujitsu is you care more for the whole than you do for the part, you know, which is yourself, um, you know, and that's, uh, like I said, that's admirable to me. Well, it hasn't been fun. I know you want to be out there. <laughs> I know you want to be out there training. Yeah. But, uh, I know you're afraid to your, you would, uh, you know, give it to somebody and like, I can just say through work, I've seen. Just in my building, I've seen probably four or five clusters, and they go quick, and they they run through that area, you know, really, really quick, and uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, we've had the same. We've had clusters at work, you know. As a as a firefighter, we live in the same house for twenty four hours with a group of five to eight other people. You know, it, sometimes the whole cluster kind of most of them get it. That's just 
that's not good. Uh, anyway, so one of the things we have on the list here is to start prepping your body for the return. I think we've kind of hit this a little bit, but just you don't want to go so far out of shape that it's going to be difficult for you to enjoy the first few days back. Jiu-jitsu is hard. <laughs> That's one thing that I always get checked with. It's like, if you miss a week of training, you're, okay, I'm back. You know, I'm going to, uh, I really want to work on, you know, th- this technique now. And then you get out there and man, <laughs> this game is hard. Uh, I didn't get any attempts even, or I couldn't get the position down right. You know, like, it, it, so to to try to get your body in a little bit better preconditioned or try not to lose what you have as much as possible uh, before you get back on the mat will make it a little less difficult. But your timing will be off a bit. That's fine. Um, you, 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 just, you have to do it to be good at it. Yep, I, I would agree. I would give one counter caution that just occurred to me while you were talking, though, Byron, is I think some people might have a uh, uh, a tendency to be, you know, I'm, I'm healed up now or, or or whatever. The gym's open back up now, but I need to get in shape first. If, yeah. if you're ready to if you're ready to go back to the gym, uh, don't take extra time off trying to get in shape. Just just go back. And, yeah, it might be a little embarrassing if you're out of shape or whatever, but you'll get in shape much quicker getting back on the mats. I love it, Joe. I was thinking the same thing. Um, and you know, that goes back to what we hear all the time. Uh, I'm going to start jujitsu as soon as I get in shape. Um, you know, we always hear that, that quote, uh, you know, start it now. Uh, what's that, or what's the best time to start or something? I don't know. I've heard you yeah, say it. When, when you were 10 years older today. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, just, just get in there. Even if you're not in shape right at this point, you've, you've let yourself go a little bit, just go in, slow it down a little bit. Um, like Byron said, your timing will be off, but you know, jujitsu is like riding a bike. You're, you're going to remember a lot of things. It's just might be a little bit slower and you might get gas a little bit quicker, but, uh, it'll, uh, is, you know, with, with regularity, it'll come. Yeah. It, and that, that's a good, uh, good catch there. I'm not advocating, Get be ready and then take another two weeks to get in better shape. <laughs> if you're ready, go back. You know, if whatever was stopping you from being in the gym is gone, time to get back on the mat. Like, like what Byron's trying to say is it, me and Joe are saying, Hey, even if you are did get out of shape, you know, still show up, but you can be proactive, uh, especially if you know what's happening or you know, when it happens, you know, start saying, Hey, I'm gonna do this to stay in shape. I'm going to eat a little bit better. Um, I'm going to jump rope if I can or, or whatever, just so that when you do come back, it'll be a, you know, less of a curve just to get back to where you're at. Yeah. My mom, my, my wife signed me up for a, uh, one of those virtual half marathons. You guys made fun of me for that, <laughs> but we, we did it. We ran, a, I, I wouldn't have ran a half marathon during COVID. Oh, but I've got to do it for this thing. And she's going it with me. That's fine. Um, yeah, we did it and that helped. And I probably well, should have done a few your, more of those. Your time. <clears throat> it's a self-reported time? time, Gary. <laughs> I'm telling you what I, I mean, me and Joe, we could actually be world record holders if we did a virtual. Yeah. Don't you, you think, have, Joe? You, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have scruples, Gary. You gotta have scruples. You no, know, I think I might do a power lifting, a uh, virtual one too. I just deadlifted 1,500 pounds. <laughs> One-handed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yes, I, I do remember hearing those sort of jokes from you guys <laughs> several months ago. I was thinking of doing a virtual uh, jiu-jitsu tournament. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'd probably still lose that one. <laughs> <laughs> I come in second with two every people. time <laughs> with one person. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, another thing we want you to do when you're getting ready for your return to the mats is to set realistic, realistic expectations. And that's something that I think is, is difficult because your last memory of Jisu was probably pretty good. Like maybe you were, you know, in really good shape and you're moving well. Maybe you just got promoted for a belt or did well at a tournament, or just tapped out that blue belt that you never tapped before. Whatever it is, like you have some sort of positive thought about how you were doing in your jujitsu. 
and to get you're not going to walk back in the first day pick that back up likely likely you'll be a little bit rusty so just be ready for that and and just kind of uh don't push too hard so my here's my expectations i will go back uh and i expect it to be hard i i i think I hope I haven't forgotten a bunch of techniques. I don't think I'll, I have forgotten techniques because I've been continuing to teach my wife jujitsu and, and to work with her. So it's, that's been fine. And we, we roll and we, we positional spar and that sort of thing, and that's good. But she's not a 200-pound weightlifter. <laughs> like, that's not even close. Like, Well, virtually she did win a powerlifting contest. <laughs> that's true. Uh, so, like, I'm just not – haven't been training with that. Or are there black belts? I haven't been training with them. Or brown belts. Or she's a, a three or four stripe white belt. She's. I mean, she's getting she's a lot much better. better now. But she's. That's what. That's what. That's our training environment. And so I do expect to have. I hope to get a couple of good rolls in, and then I know I'm going to get tired, and I and I want to. I want to continue to roll once I'm tired, and if it means that this purple belt is kicking my butt. That's fine. Yeah, if it means that somebody who usually is no trouble is giving me a lot of trouble, that's just part of my getting back onto the mats. I, I'm already, I'm already conceding. That. <laughs> like that may or may not happen, but it's okay if it does. It's part of the process. It's not only have I not been training hard, some of them have been training hard <laughs> and they are at their peak and that's not going to necessarily go well for this old guy over here. And that's, and that's, we always talk about, you know, uh, getting rid of your ego or having a healthy ego, but it's, I see a lot of people who, who do have a healthy ego as far as they'll tap when they're, they're caught, they won't get mad, but, but will they roll one more round when they're tired with somebody who gives them trouble? Maybe not. <laughs> so, I, I fully intend to make myself go with, you know, an extra round or two, even when I'm starting to get in a little bit more trouble than I should. Like that's, I don't want to push myself to get injured. That's not at all in time. I'm just talking about like, yeah, I'm probably going to get, it's, it, this this next round won't go for me. Look at this guy. He's full of energy. He's ready to go. Uh, I'm hobbling. I'm like walking to get my drink right now. I'm very thirsty, exhausted. This is difficult. One more round is fine. Um, that's that's kind of my expectations. Joe, what expectations do you have um, also dealing with an injury? So how are you going to alter things? Well, at the uh, at the rate that my knee is rehabbing, I, I expect I'm still going to be nowhere near 100% for a month or two. So uh, I expect the first class I go back to, I'm going to ask my partners. I to thought, pres- I, Joe, I thought you were going to say you're going to lose your leg. <laughs> <laughs> At the rate of my knees rehabbing, I'll probably lose my leg in a month. <laughs> no, uh, that's good. I, I expect I'm probably going to ask my partners to, and it hurts to be on my knees right now. Um, so I know Gary knows what that's like as well. So, uh, so I, I will probably play off my back in um, either an open guard or even just. Uh, <laughs> Man, I just got killed. <laughs> Uh, I, I, and I might just play bottom side control and just, you know, take a few classes and just give my opponents the opportunity to work side control, transition them out, whatever they want to work on. I think that's probably the safest way to get back on the mats. As far as um, forgetting technique, you were talking about that, Byron. I'm pretty confident that I haven't forgot any of the three techniques that I know, so I'm, I'm good there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So what do you guys think about, um, we're talking about Byron, you coming back from a layoff, Joe, you coming back from a layoff with an injury. What about your training partner like myself? Um, you know, we're talking about egos and I also think it's my, uh, what I would need to do is, is not have the ego of, Oh, cool. Byron hasn't trained in a while. I can freaking smash him now. Uh, Joe's beat me the last 50 times we rolled. He's coming back from a uh, knee injury. You know, now is my chance to pounce on him. You know, I I think, too, as a training partner, we have to know that this person's coming back from a layoff and, and, you know, talk to him. Like Joe said, you were going to talk to your training partner before we go. 
Byron, you didn't mention that, but I still think even though you're coming back from a layoff and, and I'm not even saying that, you know, being a black belt, even if you're a white belt, I think as a training partner, you know, I should talk to you about that, you know, to see how, how you want to go. And I don't think I should really turn it up. And I, I know I'm probably going to, you know, a lot of people disagree with that. Um, I, me personally, I've had a lot of people just come back who haven't been training in a while and, and I'll, I'll go slow with them. And, you know, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's kind of the way I go. Um, and even if they do turn it up, I'll, I will play a little defensive and, uh, you know, not really bring it, you know, to that person. Uh, just, I, I want them to stick around. Um, I don't want them to get hurt and, you know, I'll slow it down just a little bit. Yeah, that would be nice. I'm not, ex- I'm definitely not expect that of anybody, but if, if that's, if you're the training partner who's been training super hard in your tournaments in a week and your, your training partner comes back today and you're like, you're at your peak, probably a good idea not to just take it to them. <laughs> like every role is a situation. And, and if somebody has been gone for a while to get them back on the mats and, and to treat them how they would like to be treated is an, is an important thing. I think so. Uh, a while back, we had a belt promotion ceremony thing, and I went, and 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 Jake Fox was there. He goes, "You want to roll?" I said, "Yeah, that'd be fun." I haven't rolled maybe <laughs> like Jake in a long time, and we rolled, and it didn't go too bad. Like he didn't, you know, it, it was a, it was a fun roll. And he asked me how well, that. Wait, Byron, real quick. Yeah, I just got a text because <laughs> Jake's listening in live. He said, "Actually, Gary, I wasn't trying at all." I was doped up on horse tranquilizers and couldn't really move, and I still tapped him out seven times. Okay, never mind, Byron. You can go ahead. Uh, oh, hit me in the head. Um, you know, it's just he—he he asked me, how, you know, how 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 did you feel rolling? I said pretty good, and like by the tone of the conversation, it was like he was taking it a little bit easy on me. He, and that's, and I and I respect that from from him. He's a coach. He's a he's a teammate. He's a training partner. Um, he, I think I was trying fairly hard, and I think Jake was at a more relaxed pace than he normally gives me, just because he wanted me to enjoy the role. And like that's that's I guess that's similar. How do I train with my wife? It's like I don't want her to think I'm bored because I'm not bored, but I also don't want her to experience a negative side of just do that is just too rough and, and unsuccessful. <laughs> you, you have a, a, a smaller framed white belt rolling with a black belt who is a weaker framed. <laughs> I'll say that Gary. I like that. No, it, it's just, he wanted me to have fun on, on that role. And he gave me a competitive role. That's how I roll with a lot of people from white belt to black belt. I want it to be a competitive role. And if it means, um, you know, g- giving the blue belt mount, you know, for a little bit, then I'm trying to work and then I try to get out of that. Like, I want that fun role. I don't want the, the role where I get top, I pass your guard, I go to side, I go to mount, I get choke, boom, over. That's, that's it. That's not what I enjoy about jiu-jitsu. I want the fun roles, the back and forth. And, and I felt like Jake gave me some back and forth. I think that he wasn't bored while we were rolling, but I also think that he, he wasn't trying his best, <laughs> but he, I don't think he really, I think he rarely does. Like he trains two or three times a day. He can't go his hardest all the time. He he's, he, he's told me that before. He's like, it just, it's just too much jujitsu for my body to handle. He's got to pick his roles throughout the week and, and do those. Um, but yeah, I like to have fun roles and, it, and I can have that with almost anybody in the gym. Except Gary. And, and just for the record, so nobody has any ill thoughts about Jake Fox, he does not go around recreationally doing horse tranquilizers. <laughs> on, on a, he doesn't do that. Uh, he doesn't recreationally do horse tranquilizers. Uh, Byron slipped him in his drink before the roll. <laughs> oh, you're a good one, Joe. Uh, Saving Jake. Jake's going to be laughing when he hears this episode. So we we need to set some realistic limits limits to what we could do. So I mean that's kind of, we, we've been talking about it a little bit. I can't expect to roll like I I did a year ago even. Like I, we we would do these things and they probably still do. 
they call it Murder Murder Thursday. It's the last Thursday of the month. Everybody wears black keys if you have them. If not, whatever's fine. And we we come to classes at six thirty. We stretch a little bit, and then they put the music on, and we just roll until I, I think it's eight or eight fifteen or so. And everyone's exhausted. That's, there's no technique. There's the, it's just rolling, and you and and it is <sighs> one of the biggest classes of the month. The, you, he'll have sixty people in there, all just rolling, and and after. You know, the four or five rounds, people are going to take a break. And that's the smart thing to do. Sit out around, go around, sit out around, go, whatever. But I could do Murder Thursday without t- without stopping. I could I could get on the mat and roll hard. Now, granted, some of my rolls were against people who were not nearly as, as difficult to roll with. And that's, that's by design, I guess. But uh, I wouldn't need to take a break. Now, if I were to do Murder Thursday... This is saying a month. I would expect to sit out around two and watch and to and to maybe do a little bit of coaching and to just see how things are going. That's probably what I would do. So I need to alter my expectations about how my body's going to perform, how how my mind will perform, and uh, be ready for a little bit of a of a of a blow to what I used to be able to do. So I don't know. I, I hate to go in there and think, yeah, I'm gonna be, I, like let's just say this. Maybe my my leg was a little bit sore. My back was hurting all the time. And now, like Gary was implying, I feel good now because I've healed. That may not be enough to make me perform better at jiu-jitsu. It, maybe it does help a lot. But just just try to be ready and set those expectations. Uh, what would you guys say would be a good amount of training for – let's just keep it with me. Uh, how many times should I go back the week when I start? Should I go back every day? Should I go back a couple times or just once a week? <laughs> yeah, a real man, Byron, would do uh, seven days a week, twice a day. We could scratch that right off the table there, Gary. <laughs> you know, I, now, I always – Coming back or – go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. Well, I, I was going to say I always think of this more as how many days off between training rounds because two, two to three days, if that's Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, that might be a little bit heavy. So I'm, I might say for the first 10 days, first two weeks – you know, you try and get at least one day off between classes, or okay. maybe you only need uh, maybe you only need a week of that, and then you start going back harder. But at, at my age, coming back, I think that's where I'm at: is take at least one day off between classes. That's that's going to make sense. And my old schedule was I would train when I could, and so I work every third day. So I ha- often have two days where I could go train, have a day off, and then go train two more days, have a day off, then go train two yeah, more. Yeah, you're like, young. That, that was my the best I've done, really, with this current career that I have with the fire department. It's, I don't know, 12 years or so, 11 years. Um, I guess coming up on 12. Um, so that's that's my training schedule. And I it's always once a day. <laughs> I'm not training twice a day, getting on the mats in the morning and coming back at night and doing it again. That's not happening. But I, I do think that making sure that I have some a day off in between, that's a smart move, Joe. Yep. But your your regular schedule for a guy in his 30s or 40s that's in good shape, man, that's really ideal, I think. Two days on, one day off for your jujitsu training. Yeah. Yeah, but you said a guy in good shape. Have you seen Byron's arms? They're still as small as they ever been. Yep. <laughs> 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 okay, you just judge me by my arms because that's all that you got, man. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I alluded this one, this this comment or whatever earlier. Expect it to be challenging. I yes, I, I fall victim to this all the time. Is is that drive to work? So I'm in my car. I'm drive or to jujitsu. I'm driving that thirty minutes in my head, like. I've got what I want to do going on. Like, okay, I watch these videos. Okay, this arm and guillotine, this is a new setup, or maybe it's a counter to, uh, you know, this person's defense because this person – I got a couple of guys who are really hard to finish with arm and guillotine. And, okay, I got I got this. You know, this is going to be great. And it's just like all like rainbows and sunshine <laughs> and flowers, and it's like perfect in my head. And I get out there, and it's really hard. <laughs> I fall victim to that thought mentality all the time. 
maybe I'm just optimistic. And then, so I'm in the moment I'm thinking, well, that's not going really how I thought it would work, you know? Like, so I need to expect that just in general, I think, about my jujitsu. Jujitsu, it's, it's funny. If you're used to training all, quite regularly, you forget it's hard. It's physically hard on your body. It's mentally exhausting. You're going to go home sore a lot of times. Um, you're, I, I'm going to be using muscle I really haven't used very often. Expect it to be a challenge. I think that'll help you when you hit the, those challenges and uh, they're not going well because that's 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 fun. But if you thought it was going to be easy when you go back, if you've been if you've been studying all these DVDs and books and you know streaming you know content or whatever. You st- you have a hard road ahead of you because that is not the same as getting your your training sessions in. Do you guys think that's when you guys are going to class or getting ready to go train? Do you guys think of how great it's going to be? Like how how smooth this new technique's going to work? And then also no. ever experience that? <laughs> is that just me? You know, I, I guess I don't ever think it's going to be all rosy like that. I think it's going to be a war. Uh, um, I don't know. That's kind of how I feel. You might get jumped, you, jumped in your head. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I I will admit that occasionally I have expectations that outpace reality a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to say that, Joe. I I said the phrase uh, "rainbows and sunshine," which I don't think they necessarily go together <laughs> because you need some kind of a uh, you know, storm or well, weather you event to make the rainbow. That's true. Then I see if you stars. you get choked unconscious, you may see rainbows and sunshine. It's more stars. Shooting yeah. stars. Uh, expect, so another thing, I heard this quite a bit when I would come back to these to the belt promotion days is, where have you been? You know, how you do, what's going on, man? <laughs> like, just expect that. Like, it's it, it's a reminder that Many of your classmates are doing great, and they're on the mass and they're training, and and life continues. And I have been missing <laughs> that. And so the, the when they're at, when the, they walk into a room and there's twenty of the people and they ask you, Joe, where you been, Joe? They're not asking that to anybody else. <laughs> it's like this. We've been going without you. Um, I don't know. I that, that's kind of a reminder that not that. Not that just you've been gone, but you're missing from this. And it's it's not like everyone else was also gone. <laughs> Does that make sense or is that dumb? I'll give you one worse than that, Byron, because okay. I'm out of town all because I'm out of town all the time. I've actually gone to my home gym before and had somebody introduce themselves and welcome me. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Like, huh, huh, I guess well, I know should that? Be, I better show yeah. up a little more. <laughs> But that's awesome. Uh, you know, how many times have we talked about welcoming people into the gym? And yep. so this is probably kind of a newer person if he's never seen you before, couldn't have been training too long, and takes the time out to, you know, the new person to go in and welcome the person coming in the door. I, th- I think that's awesome. And I think that's why, you know, uh, your instructor there, Fernando, runs such a great gym is uh, you got a bunch of people like that. Yeah, but it was Fernando Thanks, that asked him if he that welcomed him to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anything else that pops in your heads, guys, about coming back after a long layoff? Just get back in there. Yeah, is my I think thing. you've you've hit it. Yeah, get back in there. Don't set crazy expectations, and uh, you know have a smile on your face. Um, you know, try to, try to make it fun and, uh, uh, try to stay healthy and, you know, don't, I think if you overdo it, you know, I, I think that's one big thing. If you overdo it, you could end up, you know, even if you're come, come, not coming back from an injury, you can end up getting injured and, uh, spend some more time off the mat. Yeah. That, and that's not what we want to do. So we've got an article this episode And it's, I guess it's more of a study. It's on PubMed.gov. And it's interesting because there's been more studies been done about jiu-jitsu lately. And so so what this study did, 
<clears throat> is they went back and kind of evaluated from what I gather, they evaluated the the calls that emergency services had to go to and for jujitsu, judo, and mixed martial arts. And then they just kind of reported what those injuries were. That's an interesting idea. Did did you, uh, you guys have a chance to read the article or do we need to pause the... <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I've uh, kind of scanned it a couple times. I, th- I thought it was interesting that, and so maybe this is a, a a deal where emergency service is involved in because it says that uh, head injuries are the most common for MMA and for Brazilian jiu-jitsu with uh, judo having leg injuries at the top. Um, I guess in jiu-jitsu, it's mostly accidental headbutts and, and elbow, uh, incidental elbows, huh? Yeah, I, I, I guess that's what's happening here. I mean, I, don't, I guess we don't know the criteria of how this was uh, gathered. Because um, in, a, in a practical standpoint, I feel I see more people get a, a knee tweaked or a shoulder, you know? It, yeah. I was going to, yeah, I, I was thinking about that myself. What are the two most injuries I've had? And it seems like knee and shoulder or wrist in there. Yeah. So this was yep. done by the Consumer Product Safety Commission National Electronic Injury Surveillance System to create estimates of injuries presenting to U.S. emergency departments. So I, I take that as an emergency department was called or contacted or, due to an injury. Or visited. Or vis- visited. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, maybe a doctor fills out a form or an emergency room person – Fills out a form and, and puts jujitsu or MMA or judo on there. Is that maybe that's what's happening here? You know, though, I mean, we're talking about head injuries, and I would bet if we're talking MMA in here, you know, think about how many head injuries, you know, we're talking a concussion, yes, uh, yep. you know, in MMA that they're probably seeing. Um, yep. And, you know, it, it's probably getting thrown under uh, uh, jujitsu. Hmm. No, well, it, it see, the article seems to to break. Oh no, it does say BJJ competitions. Yeah. yeah. So it, it so made I it seem. Think, Go ahead. Well, I was just thinking that I I just think with shoulders and and knees, a lot of times you you can recognize that it's not a devastating injury, and it's probably something you can rehab at home, so you don't go to the emergency department. But if you get an eyebrow split open by an accidental headbutt and you're pretty like Gary, you, you don't want a big scar. So obviously you're going to go to the emergency room and have some stitches put in that bad boy. Yeah. But I do. So when they're talking about these guys who are reporting it and cause I, I just don't think a lot of people go to the emergency room anymore. They go to, you know, like the immediate medical clinic. Does that place report it? I don't know. They uh, have, it might. I mean, they're looking at almost 40,000 injuries. That's a lot of injuries. <laughs> um, well, so I don't know what they're getting this. day of rolling with Byron. Yeah. <laughs> Knees and elbows flying everywhere. I'm spazzy. I, I plan on being spazzy a little bit maybe when I get back on the mats. Um, it, it's hard to get any actual information from this. So they do claim that most of MMA injuries – occurred during competition, and most of the jiu-jitsu injuries happened during training. And I I don't even know how real that number is because I think a lot of – if you're injured – if you get knocked out, you need to be – most state athletic commissions, you know, put you on a list and you've got to get seen or all this stuff. But if you get knocked out in training or get, or get your bell rung in training – you don't tell anybody. <laughs> you, you tell coach or, you know, like you're training the next day. So although MMA, you know, is very hard on your body and your and also your brain, especially during a competition, but I got to think that a lot of their concussion style injuries are just going unreported because they're used to them or they're, they're, they're just commonplace. Yeah, you take a day off. So what? You, you have headaches all the time now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's just bad advice that uh, picture one teammate gives another. Yeah. But yeah, I I don't think that's just MMA. I think that's jujitsu too. Um, you know, people who train jujitsu, wrestling, MMA, you know, 
tough people and uh, is they are more less apt to go to the hospital to report an injury. Kind of like what Joe was saying, you're, you're going to go home, you're going to ice it. You're going to look for advice on the, the jujitsu forum, uh, you know, instead of going to your doctor. And, uh, I think that's how a lot of us do it. So I, I would bet there's really a lot more injuries. It's just, uh, very underreported. Yeah, that could be the so case. I was kind of, I was kind of curious as to why, um, Leg injuries are so much more common in judo. I found another article here. Byron and I were actually talking about that this morning while we were training. And, uh, um, you know, we were kind of thinking it's, you know, a lot of throws, entangling yep. the legs on the throws. Falling with onto somebody else's leg. or yeah. Like yep. I was telling Byron, I like wrestling so much more. Um, probably, I don't know why, but I also to me, I think wrestling is so much safer. You know, I'm, I'm going down, I'm grabbing a single or a double and the legs not really getting entangled. Uh, for me, I, I feel like it's a, a better chance of me having a less, less chance of having a leg injury wrestling versus judo. But I can't say I've really ever done judo. So I guess I don't really know the sport. We'd have to ask Joe Russo. Yep. <laughs> although although he can't train judo right now because where he lives the uh jujitsu schools are interpreting the uh lockdown mandates a little bit looser than the judo schools so uh from what i understand judo schools yeah. are closed but jujitsu schools are not interesting yeah that was kind of crazy i've seen he i've seen him post that that uh he can't train judo but he can train jujitsu there in san diego so i think that was a little serious. strange yeah, yeah, that's yep. serious. Who are you talking about? Yep. That's uh, Joe. Uh, actually, one of our listeners all the time, Joe Russo. I okay. hope I'm saying your last gotcha. name right. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, he's always talking back and forth with us, and uh, he lives out in San Diego, and wow. uh, he's running into that issue right now. Interesting. Yep. Judo's judo's his main sport. Yeah. Um, I gotta get. So, Joe, Joe, you're bringing up another article. Um, what, what do you have there? Uh, it's, uh, let's see, it's sports medicine information and it's just on judo injuries and it talks about the knee injuries and the, the ligaments, uh, the sprains, tears, cartilage tear, but it's real fine print on, and my eyes are bad. But one thing it's, it's mentioning is the constant changing of directions, you know? So, so like you, you can mess your knee up even before the throw, just cause you're jerking each other around, I guess, and, and changing directions so much. And also I wonder, you know, when you, you do a throw where you, you use your leg to sweep their leg out, if you don't elevate them and they have all their weight on that one leg, I, I, I wonder if that can kind of mess with the knee a little bit. Oh yeah, definitely. You I know, you just try and try and hip toss them and their foot is sort of glued to the mat. So I, I wonder if that's where some of it comes from. Yeah. That's interesting. There's a lot of these, kind of government style studies that have been done that, that, that I didn't really know about. I stumbled upon this and uh, Joe's found another one. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, I, I don't know. I, I think of jujitsu as a pretty safe activity, but it, it, dra- it varies drastically on how you train and who you train with. When Absolutely. I'm training, my training partner's, one of my biggest priorities is my training partner's safety and also mine. Like, if you both have that attitude, there's almost a zero injury rate. I mean, surely things happen and people fall or, you know, freak accidents happen. But uh, if if, I, if I'm if i and Gary and he doesn't want to tap, I am not going to injure Gary's arm. Like, like it's like, good to know. what's Gary doing? <laughs> like, like, I don't like uh, – yeah, that's – yeah, I guess that is good to know. <laughs> I say that, Gary, but do you want to put that to the test? <laughs> Actually, I know you wouldn't. I was saying it was good to know because now if you get me in that position, I just won't tap. You will move on to something else, and then I got a chance to win. There you go. And that's the big thing is yeah. in the gym with. It's, it's, yeah, it's all about <laughs> 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 nothing else matters, as Metallica would say. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. 
All right, we'll put a link to this article and and maybe you can stumble upon Joe's article as well. Oh, I want to thank uh, Eric Trench is our uh, newest Patreon supporter. And if you want to support the podcast, yeah, thank you, Eric. Really appreciate it. If you want to support the show, uh, check us out on Patreon. There's a link in the show notes to our Patreon page. I'll mail you at a 5-inch BJJ Brick Geek Patch and a sticker as well. And uh, as a tokens of our appreciation. And I hope you're... uh, Hope you've received those by now, just in time for Christmas, Eric. <sighs> that being said, I got a rap party to attend. I need somebody to throw on a beat. <laughs> Joe, can you beatbox? Because I sure can't. Uh, I've tried it before with minimal amount of success, and <laughs> I, I think I'll pass for today. Byron, you're in trouble unless we get somebody who falls into the show. Yep. Hope his name's Mo. Thank you for listening. I hope you find the time today to roll. After all, the best way to get better at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You can visit our website at bjjbrick.com for more good times. Swing by and like our Facebook page. Our email is bjjbrick at gmail.com.